Americans held hostage, abandoned behind enemy lines. Day 69. Welcome to Hannity, this busy news Friday night, 69 days, Americans held behind enemy lines, thousands of green card holders, SIV applicants, there are families, we have no idea the exact number, all suffering in silence under Taliban rule. I know the rest of the media and Joe Biden have, quote, turned the page, we won't do that. Many are already dead. But during last night's town hall on fake news CNN, Joe Biden didn't make a single mention of Afghanistan or the men or the women and children and Americans and green card holders and allies he abandoned after 13 days prior saying he wouldn't do it. Not a mention, not a question, not a word, nothing. Wow. Now, it's possible Joe doesn't even fully remember what would happen in Afghanistan. That's way back in August. And for him, that's, you know, 400 lifetimes ago. It was a whole three months ago. And let's face it, Joe Biden's not particularly doing well. And that was on display last night, that he is everything we've been telling you, a cognitive mess. Every day, it seems to get worse and worse. It's scary. It's not funny anymore. Predictably, last night, well, the town hall became a train wreck. Take a look. 55 corporations, for example, in the United States of America, making over $40 billion, don't pay a cent. Not a single little red cent. You know if you're in real estate, major real estate, ask them. They know they should be paying a little more than 21%. We can pay for this whole thing. I have it written in a card here, but I won't bore you with the detail. The question was on the, the com on community colleges, no, I, no, I, which, which, which was a big campaign promise that, that you made. You talked about that along oh, the campaign I, I, trail. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to get it done. And if I don't, I'll be sleeping alone for a long time. I'm going off to COP26 in Scotland uh, and uh, in, I don't know, I guess it's two weeks or a week. I, I'm losing track of time. Forty percent of all products coming into the United States of America on the West Coast go through uh, Los Angeles and, uh, and uh, um, uh, um, what am I doing here? Is it Long Beach? Or? Long Beach, thank you. So, what I have said, you're shaking your head no, but let me tell you something, Jack. It's the truth. Uh, uh, well, what am I doing here? Long Beach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the save. Long Beach. At one point, Biden seemingly forgot about his own hands and just stood there like this for an extended period of time. Does anybody know what he was doing like that? Well, what was that all about? And, of course, throughout the night, Biden offered zero solutions for all of the crisis that he himself had caused. I have solutions. Bring back the Trump policies on the border, on energy, on Afghanistan, peace through strength, on the economy, lower regulation, lower taxes. That would all work. You know, but according to Joe, spiking gas prices, uh, they're not going to be getting better anytime soon. And he blamed OPEC. It's not OPEC's fault. It's your fault, Joe. Why don't you call Texas? Why don't you call Oklahoma, North Dakota, Alaska? Why don't you hire back the Keystone XL pipeline workers you fired and maybe take back that waiver you gave, gave your friend Vladimir, who pays your, whose country pays your son millions with no experience? You know, saying there's nothing I can do about high gas prices. Wow, that, that's so reassuring. Take a look. What about gas prices? Because some gas interesting. Pr gas prices relate to a foreign policy initiative that is about something that goes beyond the cost of gas. And that's because of the supply being withheld by OPEC. And so there's a lot of negotiation that is. There, 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 there's a lot of Middle Eastern folks want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm going to talk to them. Do you have a timeline for gas prices of when you think they may start coming down? My guess is you'll start to see gas prices come down as we get by and going into the winter, I mean, excuse me, into next year in 2022. I don't see anything that's going to happen in the meantime that's going to re significantly reduce gas prices. The supply is not withheld by OPEC. You, Joe Biden, you artificially reduced the supply of energy in the world because you are married to the Biden, Bernie, New Green Deal Socialist, uh, Green New Deal Manifesto. Joe Biden, you killed the Keystone XL pipeline. You're making the hostile actor Putin rich again. You're the one that banned oil and gas exploration on all federal lands. You artificially reduced America's and the world's oil and gas supply. And now the United States, once again, now you're begging OPEC, countries that hate us, for the lifeblood of our economy. 
and we're paying a buck fifty more a gallon and paying more for every single thing we buy and paying more to heat and cool our homes. Under Donald Trump, we were the world's number one producer of oil and gas. For the first time in 75 years, guess what? We were energy independent. Donald Trump, at the end of his presidency, wasn't importing one single barrel from Saudi Arabia. Now, anymore, instead of begging Texas, why don't we beg them? I'd rather ask, you can ask Texas, you don't even have to beg. Oklahoma, Alaska, North Dakota, they'll help you. Biden, you're blaming OPEC. That is a cop out, and frankly, it's an all out lie like most everything else that comes out of your mouth. And according to the former CEO of McDonald's, Biden's oil and gas policies are the cause core of, of inflation in the country and the current supply chain fiasco. The labor shortage also is playing a huge role. But Joe Biden, he is now vowing to make that shortage even far worse. If he does what we're about to play, and it happens with nurses and teachers and first responders and our military. Uh, you think the economy is bad now? It will go down precipitously right into the sewer. Listen to Joe. Should police officers, emergency responders be mandated to get vaccines? And if not, should they be stay at home or let go? Yes and yes. Uh Oh, fire them. Okay, at this point, I'll take, let's go, Brandon. I'll take Brandon and the NASCAR driver over Biden. Biden went on to mock Americans' obsession with freedom. Wow. Now, is he going to do, you going to do that, Joe? Is that going to do it? Just spit in the faces of millions of Americans. They're not going to listen to you, Joe. They're not going to listen to flip-flop Fauci. They're not going to listen to the ever-changing, you know, rules of the CDC or the NIH. You caused this vaccine hesitancy, all of you. And by the way, because of that and because of the mixed messaging and because of the shifting change and changing standards, they've made up their own mind. Now, you can try to convince them, but you've been trying and it's not working. And you're, now you're going to fire them? I thought you said you'd never implement a mandate, Joe. Fauci said it. Pelosi said it. Saki said it. You all said it wouldn't happen. Now Americans are being mandated. What happened to the choice of at least getting tested? Do you still offer them that option? Or are you going to take away their, their pay, their benefits, their pensions? Now, of course, the debate, frankly, in my mind, is over. It's not, no longer in this country about vax or not vax. Because millions of Americans, they have made up their mind and they don't agree with Joe Biden for whatever reason. We've had that debate. That's their choice. We live in a free society and their decision. Now, there's got to be a way to thread the needle because if you have all these people willing to sacrifice their jobs, their pay, their benefits, their pensions, their careers, their salaries over mandates, they must believe pretty strongly in their position. Now, make no mistake, thousands of cops, firefighters, nurses, first responders, soldiers walking off the job, if that happens, this country will not be more safe and secure, and it'll have a devastating impact on our economy. Joe Biden and his radical advisors do not care about safety and security. They only care about politics. Just look at the border. In order to appease the radical left, Joe Biden not only is not enforcing the laws of the land, Donald Trump's plans worked. And he couldn't implement them once again, and they'll work once again. Instead, he's decided to go out on his own. And Joe Biden, now, where are we? We're now at a record high, 40-year record high of illegal immigrants coming into the country. Ironically, the same time Biden started construction of a giant wall around his beach house. By the way, it's going to cost you almost 500 grand. Now, the southeastern border is a disaster. Apprehensions are at an all-time high. We're on track for nearly 2 million plus illegal immigrants this year. And by the way, that's where 90 percent of, of heroin crosses into this country through our southern border. Fentanyl is killing hundreds of Americans a week. That's crossing across the southern border. Joe, he's just too busy to visit, so he lies about visiting and says a drive through is a visit. Take a look. Do you have plans to visit the southern border? Uh, I've been there before, and I haven't. I mean, I know it well. I guess I should go down, but the... But, but, but the whole point of it is I haven't had a whole hell of a lot of time to get down. I've been spending time going around looking at the $900 billion worth of damage done by, uh, by hurricanes and floods and, and weather and, tra and traveling around the world. But uh, 
I plan on... Now, my wife, Jill, has been down. She's been on both sides of the river. She's seen the circumstances there. She's looked into those places. This guy is a cognitive mess. He's your president. Wow. Oh, I sent my wife down to look at it, and he never went there? Not too busy to spend nearly every weekend in Delaware at your beach house, right, Joey? And don't worry, your border czar, Kamala Harris, oh, yeah, she swung by El Paso once on her way to California while she was spewing carbon emissions left and right. And, of course, she has no plans to go back. And, by the way, we, you know, we've been looking at this for months. We can't find any record of Joe Biden ever one time visiting the border. Jen Psaki got into it again with our own Peter Ducey, and Joe Biden was definitely not lying, she says. Oh, really? What, he did a drive-by? That counts as a visit to the border? Take a look. Why did President Biden say he has been to the border? Well, Peter, uh, as you may have seen, there's been uh, reporting that he uh, did drive through the border when he was on the campaign trail in 2008. Does that count as a visit? He said, I've been there before. You're saying he drove by for a few minutes. Does that count? What do you, what is the root cause? Where are people coming from who are coming to the border, Peter? The president said that I'm he asking, has been I'm to asking the you a question because I think people should understand the context. No, you're where do people, question, where do people, co- I'm asking you if that Okay, happens. I'll answer it for you. People come from Central America and Mexico to go to the border. There is a focus right now on a photo op. The president does not believe a photo op is the same as solutions. But he said, that may be a difference he has with but, Republicans. But that's not what he said either. He said, I guess I should go down. So does he think that he needs a photo op? Is that what he's saying? He, he doesn't. Saying? And that's a fundamental disagreement he has. All right. If the White House has any evidence that Biden actually stopped and visited the southern border, we'd love to see it. They're lying. And if Joe Biden had a solution to the southern border crisis, we'd like to hear about that. Here's the thing that they don't have, and that is a solution. I have one. Follow the Trump plan. They're not working on a solution. They don't care what happens at the border. And tonight, they're focused on one thing above all else, new Green Deal radical socialism packaged in this Build Back Better propaganda talking points and bumper stickers. This bill is a massive step of America the greatest wealth-creating system in the entire history of mankind now becoming a socialist hellhole. You know, like the former Soviet Union, Venezuela, Cuba. Okay, simply put, it takes money from everybody that works and gives it to everyone else. That is confiscation of pretty much all, all of the economy in the form of fairness and government entitlements. The bill raises taxes on everyone, especially those making under 50 grand a year. Joe's lying on that, too. It will increase both the debt and deficit on a massive scale, even though they lie and say it won't cost a single penny. Inflation, which is already really bad, is going to get worse. The bill will replace reliable forms of energy, you know, like uh, oil and gas and coal, with unreliable, costly forms of energies. You know, oh, windmills and solar panels that are not proven reliable. If Joe Manchin, if you really care about the people of West Virginia, and I believe you do, you will vote no on any form of this bill.